Today we're gonna to show you how to make this stuff, steak and potatoes. Once again, starting with potatoes, okay? So down here, I've got my mandolin, just like the last video. Look at that rubber, smack that down. Gotta see how thick it is first, that's what she said. It's a little too thick, so just like that. And what we're doing here is we're gonna make all these layers and we're gonna stack them on top of each other. Do a couple slices, see where our thinness is at. This is still a little thick. This should be perfect where I want it. This is, this is good. You can do it like this if you want. I want it to be thinner. So let's do a couple little slicey slice. And we don't wanna put these in water. I know I mentioned in the last video with the chips, I put them in water so they don't oxidize. We don't wanna do that with this right here because those potato starches are what's gonna hold this stack together when we fry it and we need that starch. The water gets rid of that starch. We wanna keep it. Keep it out. If it oxidizes, it's all good. You're gonna deep fry it. It's gonna be brown anyway. Also, I'll mention these are Idaho russet potatoes. Once again, it's the same kind of potato that I recommend when you're frying. Yukon Golds are good too, but I wouldn't recommend frying those. They're a little too waxy for that. Also, when you're working with a mandolin, make sure to watch. Don't look away like I'm doing, because it's really dangerous. Use a handguard, use a handguard. Obviously not if you work in restaurants with this stuff, you're used to it. Now here's all of our stacks going on right here. Now all we gotta do is put them together. Like I said, I typically go thinner with these potato stacks, but I wanna make these a little more user-friendly, because not everyone can go that thin. So this thickness will be fine. And I also didn't mention I have oil over here. It's getting warm. I'm using rice oil, just like last time. This is all my stacks right here. They're all roughly the same height. I'm just gonna give them all a little press, sort of get them together. It's okay if they're not leveled out, it's all good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these now. Just gonna cut the edges. You don't have to do this, but if you wanna make it look a little bit prettier, more presentable, use the scraps for mashed potatoes or something like that. I've served these in a restaurant before and at pop-up dinners. You might ask like, how do you do this ahead of time? I would recommend par frying all of them, and then you could just leave them out when you need them, just toss them in the deep fryer. But there's our potato stack. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfectly leveled. There will be some gaps in between. You can fix it if you want, it's, it's all good. Like, look, check it out. You could take that out and look, put that layer right there. There you go, it's more leveled. But still, you don't have to be that picky. It's a potato, it's still delicious. There is our beautiful potato stack that's gonna be ready to fry. Let's go ahead and do the rest of these right? All right, now if you wanted to, you could make these a little smaller. Cut them in half, whatever size you want. You could even do uh, some triangles if you wanted. Whatever shape you desire. I think I'm gonna go with this. This is kind of nice, actually. What about a circle? All right, Michael's saying we should do a circle, so let's try a circle out. Let's see. I think this one's big enough. It's a little uneven, but... And then there's a, a circle. You could do circles if you want. You could do triangles, you could do squares, you could do fucking shape, whatever you want, right? You know, do whatever you want. Potato stacks. <laughs> so I wanna make sure that these are really pressed together so they stay together. Cause remember, we're utilizing just the starch from the potatoes. Also, that oil should not be very hot cause if the oil is too hot, then what these will do is they'll just like break apart like that and they'll look like shit. So we don't wanna do that. Like I said, I don't really care what shapes I have, but if you do, do you. Now, we're going to deep fry these guys. Oil, this is rice oil by the way. Use rice oil, canola oil, peanut oil. A lot of people are saying, Harry Potter. A lot of people are saying like, why don't you use grapeseed oil or olive oil? You can't use that, you need stuff with a high smoke point. You might say grapeseed oil has a high smoke point, but yeah, grapeseed oil is expensive, okay? So I'm not gonna do that. One little bottle is like $15. So I want this to be at around 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Like I said, they're too hot, they're gonna start falling apart. So let's go ahead and do a little tester, see where we're at. That's about where I want it to be. I don't want it to be like rolling, bubbling. No agitation here. Gently drop them in. As you can see, I'm doing one even single layer, not overfilling, not overstacking. Over here, what I have is citric acid. I'm just gonna do a touch of that. Kosher salt. And then just give it a little tossy toss. Stay tuned, I'm actually be coming out with my own sour salt. If you don't have citric acid, you could uh, just do a little bit of lemon juice. I would suggest getting some citric though. Really good to have in the kitchen. Okay, check it out. Now at this point, this color, 
you can go ahead and pull it on out when it's GBD, set it onto your rack, and then we've got that citric salt. Goes all over that. Beautiful potato stacks. Now we just let these rest on the side while we work on our steak. So this is just a Kobe beef New York strip. You can use whatever New York strip you want. So it has a lot of fat. I'm gonna take off this little nub that the steak comes with, okay? And with this, I can go ahead and render it over here on medium heat. Now let this sit there and render, do its thing. While that's going, I'm gonna season my steak. Kosher salt on both sides. As you can also tell, I patted my steak down dry with a paper towel. I've got my four corn peppercorn mix going on the steak. See that fat rendering there? I'll just leave it there. Fatty in right here, and that's gonna go down. Fat side down. And this is how I cook a steak perfectly every time. This is on medium heat, and now I'm gonna crank it up all the way. And now I'm just letting the fat render out from that fat cap on the steak as well. Once this pan gets to a high enough temp, I'm gonna put it down. My fat is starting to go smoking. That's why I'm going down. Good old press. Now we'll just give it a flip. Okay, now once I flip it, I'm gonna lower this heat down to medium. I'm gonna let it go to about medium rare or so. So now at this point, I'll take some butter. That goes in. A little sprig of thyme in there. Garlic. Now at this point, I'll remove it from the heat and let it rest on the side. That's gonna just rest in the pan with the fat and everything and it should be good. Okay, now on the cutting board. By the way, I have a video on how to care for your cutting boards. Check that out. Ooh, this handle's really f***ing hot. <sighs> okay, so as you can see, steak is well rested. All of that butter has been steeping in this garlic and thyme, so definitely save that and pour it on your steak. Glistening. So there we go. Here's a nice looking Mr. Steak. Medium rare, Mr. That's how I say it. I'm gonna try that, dude. Ooh, yeah. Good steak. That's perfect. Okay, so let's see. I've got some leftover miso butter. A little bit of that stuff. So we have like our butter potato situation going on with some of our scallions. Okay, then I'll just give a little pat down dry here first. Then our little steaky steak can go right there. Garlic that was in that butter. And then here is the garlic chips from the past video. Some of those garlic chips. Finish with some black pepper. And then we've got some gold flaky salt right there. Yo, that looks like a solid looking dish, right? Look at this. Steak and potatoes, dude. Is that a good thumbnail? What do you think? What's a good thumbnail for this? Or like that? That's a good one. Steak and potatoes. All right, a little steaky steak, potato stack, some of that miso butter. There you go, dude. That was a good bite. Oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, should I just eat it in all one bite? That's what she said. <laughs> That's too much. It's too much? It's too much for you? Your mouth isn't big enough? Steak and potatoes. Mmm, okay. Okay. That was really good. See, that's how you're supposed to do it. Take a bite here and there. 